you can make the sickest brutalism style poster designs using my simple processes in this Adobe Photoshop tutorial. There's absolutely no denying that the brutalism design style is currently all the rage. It's usually categorized by a bleak futurism concept, a rough textured almost draft like aesthetic, typography as a structural element, a modular repetition of assets and a strategic use of negative layout space. So it's easy to see why along with like Y2K and acid graphic styles, brutalism has found a new home within the world of metal, punk and hardcore graphic design. All right, all right, let's get cracking. As always, we're going to start off with a nice high quality image. It's going to be 4000 by 4000 pixels at 300 DPI. I invert it to black and then I take these like hilarious PNGs of Windows 95 Microsoft Paint and Notepad. I'm just going to drop them in in the top left and right of the panel just to sort of lock in our composition for this design. Now for some nice repeating elements, I'm going to use these six cyberpunk grids that I got on Creative Markle, I believe. I'm just going to start copying and pasting them and stitching them together to fill out the two windows here. And with the marquee tool, I'm going to make a selection and delete any bits that are sticking out underneath the frames. These are very nice elements because you can duplicate them indefinitely and make, you know, infinite patterns and backgrounds. It's awesome. Now for a bit of fun, I thought I'd use this font called Windows and just type out Spearhead Notepad and uh, lay it over here over Untitled. Then with our marquee tool, I'll make a selection of uh, the Untitled Notepad part. Then with our eyedropper, select that blue and just fill it so it deletes that uh, unwanted text. I then rinse and repeat with the Microsoft Paint window. To fill the top right hand corner of the panel, I'm going to use my Spearhead Chrome logo and lock it in there nicely. Now to play with the sort of dark futurist aesthetic of brutalism design, I'm going to use this incredible alien queen looking thing that I got on Shutterstock and make it look like it's bursting out of the notepad window there. For the Microsoft Paint window, I thought I'd have like a skeleton trying to crawl out because he spends too much time at the computer. I think a lot of us can uh, feel what he's feeling right now. So I grabbed these six skull skeleton and skeleton hand uh, 3D models that I got on Envato Elements. Yo guys, we have to give a huge thank you to Envato Elements. They've given our community a 70% discount on your first month subscription. Go check it out at the link in the description. As I said, it's the best asset site on the planet. I use it in absolutely every project and every single one of these videos. I'll grab one of the skeleton hands and I'm gonna lay it over the paint window there. I'll then make a selection of the paint window, then grab the skeleton hand, and with a hard eraser, I'm gonna start rubbing out the bits that will be underneath the frame, if you get me. When that's looking nice, I take our free lasso tool and just clean up a few of the joints there. I then duplicate the skeleton hand, I'll flip it horizontal and bring it over to the opposing side. Now I'll grab our skull layer, and I'm just gonna give it a quick refine edge to take off any shadows from the 3D model, and I'm gonna drop it there right in the center of the panel. Now grabbing the skeleton body, I'm gonna use marquee tail just to take the top of it, I'm going to copy and paste it just below the frame there. Then with free lasso, I'm going to make a selection of the arm and free transform, I'll just like tilt it over so it lines up more with the hand. Then I'm going to merge that onto the rib cage and then with our marquee tool, I'm going to make a selection of just half of it. I'll copy and paste it and then with the pasted version, I'm going to flip that horizontally and bring it over to the other side using our hard eraser to rub out any bits that are sticking out from underneath the frame. Again, with the eraser, I'm just going to rub out the bit of the spine that you can see through the mouth. Now to use some typography as a structural element, I'm just going to use our type tool and drag out a nice text box there. I'm going to use Frutiger, which is a nice sans serif font, and I'm going to paste in some lore that I wrote from my Crypt Keepers collection. I'll then play around with the font size and the line spacing, and then I'll justify the whole thing so it fits really nicely within this text box. And as you can see, it's now looking solid as a rock. Next up, I'm going to use this killer 3D model from Invado Elements of a scorpion. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen, but you know those like traditional tattoos of like a scorpion with like a medieval mace as its tail? Well, that's what I'm going to try sort of reproduce here. I'm going to open up this crazy World of Warcraft looking like orc that I got on Shutterstock because I think that mace is going to be perfect. With our magic wand tool, I'm just selecting out bits of the white there. And with marquee, I'm going to make a selection and copy and paste the ball end of the weapon. Here I put down this class looking medieval chain and I'm just going to lay it over the scorpion's tail there, just chopping bits off with free lasso. Then with puppet warp i'm gonna start putting anchor points on each like loop of the chain and then i'm just gonna drag them into place warping it until it looks quite natural as if the scorpion is like swinging this weapon around with free lasso tool i'm gonna start chopping bits of the chain off at the end 
and use our soft eraser in different selections to kind of photo bash it into place and make it look like it's all part of the one character. Then with standard warp and free lasso, I'm gonna start dragging the arse of the scorpion into place there. Now with a different angle of the same skull I used earlier from Invado Elements, I'm just gonna like, I'm gonna pop the skull on top of the scorpion's face there. After a quick refine edge, I'm gonna use warp to drag it down into place. Then with a selection of the scorpion and a soft eraser, I'm sort of just gonna blend it into the scorpion's body. I'm then gonna bring all the blacks down in the levels to sort of make it look like it's part of the same figure. I've used this amazing sci-fi gun that I found on Shutterstock and I'm just gonna drop it in there below the text. I then start nudging different elements around the artboard, uh, just by eye, you know, nothing too strict again. Just in a particular way that I think looks nice. Now I've grabbed another one of these awesome cyberpunk elements from the same pack that I got on Creative Market. I'm just gonna pop it there under the notepad window, just for a little bit more visual noise. Now for a little bit more photo bashing, I've got these amazing like cables that I got in the Ultimate Cable Pack off Neostock. And I'm gonna pop them in there on top of the skeleton's head to make it sort of seem like, you know, he's like plugged into the computer. Then making a selection of the, uh, the Microsoft Paint frame there, I'm just gonna grab our cables layer again and with a hard eraser rub bits them out. Then with this insane sort of Android looking uh, thing that I got on Shutterstock, I'm gonna drop it in the background there to make it look like the skeleton's really trying to claw his way out of the computer. Now again for my signature move, I'm gonna make a selection of the skull and refine the edge again and with a hard eraser I'm gonna go in and I'm starting to rub out different bits of the teeth. You guys know I love doing this because it adds a little bit more interest to the character itself and uh, gives a little bit of like comedy as well as looking like metal as all hell. So in Liquify I'm just gonna start painting different bits of the skull to give him a little bit more personality. I'm dragging all the teeth down making them really spiky and make it look really horrible. After that I pop a drop shadow on the skull and the hands just to sort of break it up from the frame a little bit more. Then I was thinking that our text box was looking a a little bit too clean so I got this almost like matrix looking like alien like language that I found on Envato Elements. I'm just gonna lay it there and loosely line it up with our text because I thought it'd be kind of funny if the lore here was sort of melting away. I then rasterize our type and with our marquee tool make a selection that will be underneath the alien language and delete it. I rinse and repeat with the top part of the alien language. Now I use this absolutely lovely blood splat and pop it underneath the mace there. I actually went to the museum in Visby in Gotland in Sweden and they have like a medieval exhibition in there and and the whole place is covered in these blood splats. So I just took a picture of it with my phone and then cleaned it up in Photoshop afterwards. After that, I used warp to kind of bring the, the chain tail in a little bit more and then give that a nice refine edge as well. Now, considering I covered these cool cyberpunk elements, I decided I'd reuse them and put them underneath my logo here. Again, just copying and pasting and duplicating them until they sort of fill up the panel underneath the logo. Then I felt our alien queen was sort of missing something on the bottom there. So I used this insane like render from, I think it was Ken Coleman, an, an amazing Irish artist. I got this on Neostock and I decided I'd just pop it in behind for a little bit more visual interest. Following that I just drop in this cool like space render again from Neostock to fill in the frame. I just kind of nip tuck and play with my levels and stuff and then moved on to sort of filling in a little bit more of the negative space. I used this cool element from the futuristic headers pack that I got off Dreadlabs website. Um, check out his channel and check out that shop. There's loads of cool stuff. Then I throw in some bullets beside the gun because guns need bullets and sort of begin to tinker around a little bit with my alignments and getting stuff all locked in nicely so it's a really solid overall form. You can see I was kind of thinking on my feet as I went through this so you can kind of see a lot of my process. It's a bit chaotic and if you think this is chaotic you should see my desktop. Oh my god. Now to fill in the bottom left part beneath our scorpion, I use my Palace of Death logo which is actually on some of my merch in the Realms of Chaos store because I think this design would be perfect for merch, would be perfect for posters or even album art. If you want to support the channel, check out my new merch line Realms of Chaos and pick something up. It'll go a long way to helping me devote the time to making these videos. I then make use of our cyberpunk grids here that were below the alien queen. So I'm just copying and pasting these bad boys and laying them down underneath our scorpion. Using a bit of uh, marquee to nip tuck and just nudging it around until I thought it looked alright. Now I'm making use of another sick cable asset from Neostock. I'm laying it down on our alien queen and making it look like it's bursting out of her chest and wrapping around her arm by making selections and rubbing bits out. I then take my trusty blood splat, pop it over the top there and use multiply as our blend mode to make it seem like the cable has been jammed in into her heart. Now considering our whole artwork is going to be suitably Xeroxed to oblivion at the end of this, I put a black and white adjustment layer above all the layers and then I go into camera raw filter and I crank the texture and the clarity and I rinse and repeat through every single element we have on this artboard. It's a little bit time consuming but you'll see in the end it's totally worth it. 
It just brings it out so much more detail in each individual asset and gives it a sort of cartoony feeling. Not to mention the detail and the noise is going to be picked up so well when we use our filter gallery trick to Xerox it all. I'm also playing around with our levels to kind of nudge whites up and blacks down in different parts and different layers in order to make sure every single element has the same amount of punch in the artboard. This can be a tedious and boring process, but again, believe me, it will be worth it. After I've crunched up all of our layers, I'm going in and I'm renaming everything to make sure I know what's what. I'm also merging different layers together into different groups. For example, I've merged the skeleton and the frame and the alien queen and the frame because I'm gonna color these in different ways after. I also cleaned up a little bit of our scorpion here and gave it a nice white stroke on the edge, just so this mean little chap really pops out and doesn't get lost in the background. I'm also running a few of these layers, for example, the text through displacement maps to really grunge them up, especially because I want the text to look like it's fallen apart. There you can see I made a selection of all the text on the right hand side and nudged it to the left a bit, again to make sure that all of our negative space is nice and balanced and looks like a solid design. Now as if it wasn't enough in the first place, I'm going back into Camera Raw and I'm giving every single layer a huge boost in clarity and texture, taking care to bring up and down levels where necessary. You can see this whole process really pays dividends because it's looking grungy and nasty already. Now I'm going in and going through every single layer and making them grayscale. You can do this by pressing Shift, Control, Alt and B. That'll make the whole layer black and white. Now with all of our black and white layers, I'm just going to bump the whole artboard up from 4000 pixels to 6500 pixels and run them all through a nice displacement map to grunge them up a little bit more. Now it's time for our filter gallery Xerox effect. Instead of doing all the artwork in one go, I'm going to apply this effect to each layer individually. I picked up this nice tip from Charlie Pangus, an absolute gem. Check out his channel, it's amazing. He's like got the Merch Design Academy, can't recommend it enough. But what he has done is instead of having one grain layer, He's got two grain layers and he set one grain layer to enlarged and one grain layer to regular. And you can see here, this means we get a really nice flat level of grain throughout the whole image. In stamp, I also made sure to put smoothness all the way down to one so we get a really crispy, dirty effect. I then rinse and repeat with all of our layers. You can see here that some layers need a little bit more noise than others. You can do this by increasing the intensity and just bringing out a little bit more black. We want these to look quite uniform because it's all part of the same design, if you know what I mean. And if you want to learn how to do this in more detail, you can check out my Xeroxing effect tutorial. The link should be up there in the right hand corner. Now we want to give our design a little bit of color. It's mainly going to be black and white, like the background will be black and the main detail will be white. I've picked this nice purple and green because they're contrasting colors. And a nice thing is if you invert these, the purple will go green and the green will go purple. So all I do is I go in and I make a selection of each layer. For example, you press control and click on the thumbnail, make a new layer above it, and then you can press shift and F5 and that'll bring up your fill. And with your eyedropper, you just grab that purple, go into color and press fill. Some of the layers that you fill with the color, you want like the black detail to come through. So all you do is with your color layer selected, you go into your blend modes, select multiply, and that'll let all the detail pop through. You can see I decided to make the, the splat and the bigger parts of the typography this green to really clash with that purple. And with that, we're almost at the final stretch. It's looking awesome. Now after saving, I flatten the artboard and I duplicate our layer. With our free transform tool, I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller and then center it so there's more black around the edges and it sort of locks in the whole panel nicely. And for the final touch, I'm gonna drop in one of my spearhead textures. This is 323. I use it for everything it's awesome and i'm gonna set the blend mode to screen so it looks like this is like a nice old vinyl cover a really nice little touch of using the contrasting colors is you can go into your hue slider and spin it around a bit and see all these different combinations look awesome together and voila we are done so let's go cheers gang i hope this tutorial helped inspire you to go create your own savage merch posters and album art designs with these quick processes don't forget you can download my free assets pack the link is in the description there's over 100 elements like textures fonts displacement maps stock photos you can use them in all your projects as always feel free to join our community discord server the scrap heap the link is in the description and today i'm going to be shouting out some of our most active members and showcasing the ripper artwork that they've been making with these tutorials first up we got the legend mike from fear on the dark with this insane merch design featuring an edited version of my font siege engine absolutely love it next up we got this badass logo from gosta he made this by following along my hardcore logo tutorial and it's an absolute ripper great job and finally we've got this monstrous logo from pale blood my dude made this using inspiration from my black metal logo design tutorial and absolutely killed it 
And if you want your work featured in the next video, then jump into the scrap heap and get involved. Peace.